Hello guys, this is Goodlike, and this is the series where I try to create an application that will replace and expand on the functionality of YouTube Subbox. So last time we had a complete disaster because I was too anal about my project structure. Let's see what happens today. Maybe it'll be better. Uh, as you can see in today's plan, we kind of want to get through all the way through to GitHub and Git and all the dependencies and perhaps even try out the Google API. So that's that probably will be a bit rough. Yeah, in fact, I'll go do one small thing off screen first, just in case we get there in time. And then I'll start the timer, then we'll start the video. All right, so just in case, let's see that everything still works. It still works. Good. Can never be too careful. All right, first thing on the agenda, dependency updates. Yeah, let's let's get that out of the way. So, as you can see right now, we're using all kinds of ancient dependencies, and some of them aren't even of what I actually want to use. I want to switch to, for example, JUnit 5. Now, best place where I think you can find dependencies is the Maven repository. That's usually where I go. Right, JUnit 5 can be found under JUnit Jupyter. And we're going to be using Gradle. And it's under Eclipse Public License. Licenses are pretty important. Let's see. Doesn't seem like there's anything particularly crazy. Let's compare it to JUnit 4, for sake of reference. Eclipse Public License 1. How different could two public licenses of the same level be, huh? Alright, so I paste this in, and I'm gonna clean it up to be more... short. We don't need this mess in here. Anyway, aside from that, I guess we could look into some... Apache Commons libraries. Yeah, those are usually pretty good. Right, so I grabbed a bunch of these uh, libraries, and I also grabbed uh, new logging libraries. And from my experience, when I also added a uh, simple logging framework for Java, that really messed things up. So I decided, why don't we try using just pure log4j for logging, if we need any logging at all, which we probably will need. That's an interesting idea that I have not considered before. Why not? Let's try it. See what happens. What's the worst that's going to happen? We're going to have to change some code? Boo-hoo! Next up is one more test dependency. Since we are using Guava, there is a special library for assertj, which helps with Guava. It's called Fluent Assertions for Guava. And now we're about to add it. Right, that looks good. I think we can get started with this. It's the bare minimum. Bunch of utility stuff. That's very generally used. A logging framework, a testing framework. What else do you need? However, the versions that we're using here are not all latest. Which is why I use this plugin, the Ben Mains versions plugin, which will provide us with a hopefully up to date list and we can use that to update. I'm sure there's a plugin that automatically updates as well, but uh, it's not a safe bet. Sometimes this, uh, the versions can be pretty crazy. All right, the cert core has advanced quite a bit. Even the versions plugin has advanced. Yeah, Shadow Jar has literally doubled its version. And there's... Yeah, Guava is now adding GRE for some reason at the end of it. I'm sure there's a good reason. Maybe uh, there's a split between Java and Android. Who knows? That, that, that would make sense. But a lot of these are already up to date because I already picked them up up to date. Still, let's run it one more time, just to be sure we didn't miss anything. It actually took a lot further. Oh, well, look at that. In the, in the span of literally a second, I swear, what happened was that Gradle updated itself to 5.0. Literally this very moment as I speak, because it's, it's in one of the reports, but not the other report. That's amazing. 
But we're not going to use point for 5.0 release candidate cradle. I already had my fill of gradling last episode. I ain't about to amp it up to the next level. We can now get rid of this and make sure the tests work. So yeah, let's let's do that. That's really easy. Let's create our base package in the tests and create a test class. I use a very special what would you call this? Let's see, um template for class. It's not that different, I just added final here, which is generally what I tend to do. I don't think I've edited any other we have a few warnings. Uh, we don't need these warnings. Yeah, declaration access, definitely one of the weakest warnings. And we have our first test failure, which is a good sign. It means that everything's working. But it does, does remind me something, actually. There is something we want to make sure happens. And that is that when we run Gradle tests, task, which we could try right now, it'll retest. We would actually run the tests, but I believe, as you will see, we executed some tasks, but it doesn't tell me that anything failed. This is because there is a problem. All right, let's put it here. So, by default, By default, Gradle is set up to use only what I assume is JUnit 4 or some other basic testing, detection, whatever it does. You have to use this specific method. In the test task, you have to do use JUnit platform. Then, if you do it, then your Gradle tests will actually work. So there we go, execution fail for test. There were failing tests, which didn't happen until we added this particular line. So that's good, that's good. Since we're messing around here, we might as well add some stuff to Shadow Jar as well. Okay, so there's a couple of things I added to Shadow Jar, specifically this and this. Uh, they're just necessary when you use log4j with Shadow Jar. I mean, well, and some other libraries, of course. Uh, not 100% sure that we would have had the issue, but you might as well have them. It doesn't hurt. And it will definitely help in some situations. Next on the agenda is git, git ignore, and git up. So, without further ado, we're going to create a git repository right here in the sub box git master yes that being said we don't want all of this crap in our git repository so we will create a dot git ignore file ah the plugin helps but not needed right now so what do we want to exclude from github Definitely don't want to see build in there. Or Gradle. Or idea. Or godforsaken logs. We do want wrapper. We don't want artifacts. Artifacts can just be built on the fly. Uh, config credentials is something I don't want to share. Config public is something I do want to share. Uh, spikes, normally I would not put on the Git repository, but in this case, since I'm doing everything live anyway, it doesn't really matter, so we can get all the spikes, test and test config. Everything else seems to be quite necessary, but just in case, we will also add the following to the list. The plugin complains because all of these are already covered, but I don't care because a different project who isn't as crazy as I am and setting this up 
will have these files appearing randomly, and I don't want them to be committed either. So there we go. Well, IVS isn't needed because it's definitely moved in, and so. But but these two, as you can see, could find their way outside of the folder with a little bit of nudging. Something we don't want. All right. So now that we've done this. It's about time we add this entire project to Git and create our first commit. Which basically has nothing but our main class, our failing test, our git ignore, our rather large configuration, and the Gradle wrappers. Interestingly enough, Gradle wrapper did not get added. See, it's not, it's not ignored by anything. It cannot be added. What manner of magic nonsense is this? Let me, allow me to close this and reopen it. As usual, that's probably a way to, okay, let's, let's take a look a bit here. Are there any inversion files if I add them? Config public wrapper, uh-huh. Those are clearly not in version though, so I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you, but I want to add the wrapper. For some reason, it doesn't want to be added. Oh dear, oh dear, no, why is this happening? Is, is it time again? Are we gonna have to use git add? I don't remember the like the full functionality of git command line. Let's just do this. Uh huh. That's definitely not a command. Help me! I've not used command line with git for a hundred years. How do you add shit? Is it literally just add? Get add is that is that the problem? Ah, huh. as you can see, nothing a little bit of command line magic cannot fix, even if even if IntelliJ IDEA refuses to comply. There's always the terminal, but boy, I'm I out of shape. For that. Alright, let's uh, go ahead and oof, almost start writing my commit message like I'm working somewhere. Uh, let's just call this initial commit. That's the usual way people do it. Commit and push, even though we don't have where to push. There's warnings, I know those, those are the warnings there in the get ignore, ignored them. But we need a remote. And uh, let me go ahead and set one up in GitHub. Ignore all these tabs. Really? Really? Is is this what this is going to be now? Is every episode going to be just me running into absurd odds defying circumstances in which I can't access what I need to access or do what I need to do properly? Because of some bullshit. This video is probably going to be pretty short. There's probably going to be a lot of cuts due to silence and stuff. But for fucking sake, how long do I need to wait for this? Please wait a while. I can't sign into my GitHub because for some reason my Google Authenticator two-factor authentication code doesn't work. You don't fucking work. You piece of shit. Why? Appears to be already in sync? You fucking piece of shit. Appears to be already in sync, my ass. Okay. How long does he have locked you out? Been locked out for 60 minutes. 60 minutes! Well. Shit. Fine. Fuck GitHub. 
You need to look at things from a different perspective. If GitHub isn't having me, then I'll just find a different place to put my code. God fucking damn it. <laughs> Ah, is it in junk? No. <laughs> oh, don't mind me, I'm just creating something on Bitbucket. This is called Subbox for advanced settings. Probably should have clicked that. Well, too late now. I'm sure nothing wrong will happen here if I just do this. Don't worry, guys. I'll figure something out and move to GitHub in the next, before the next episode. We'll, we'll, we'll have a migration. This doesn't launch because it's fucking scripts, man. So many scripts. Anyway, now we have something. Let's see if that works. I think that should work. Think it'll work? Bingo, bango. Push. For commit and push to non protected branches, preview comments before... P whatever, just push it. I see. Bitbucket login. Oh, nice of you. Hey, Fucking success. Look at this. Just a look at this. Do you need some more sources? Atlassian net? I'll give you Atlassian net. There you go. That's all I needed, is to give it... It looks pretty, pretty under the weather. It's it's missing some icons, clearly. But, I mean... It fucking works. We have a fucking Git repository. <laughs> I just want to just put a Git up. Doesn't matter. I accomplished my goal. That's more important than anything else. We got Git, we got GitHub, and since this took like 15 billion years of extra time that, you know, it's just going to be cut, I'm going to give myself 10 more minutes, and in these 10 more minutes, we're going to go ahead and try to try out some Google API. First of all, we need the Google API, so once again, we're going back to Maven, I assume it's there. Google API client. Wow, it's pretty recent. Google API client library for Java. Google API. Just to try it out, you know, see what happens. Get it in there. You gotta get it in there first. It's, it's probably pretty big. It uses Jackson. Okay. That's a library I know. And we're gonna try it out in the spike. So let's have a class called what do you call this? Google API Spike. Spikes are interesting. They're supposed, as far as I'm aware, to mean essentially something like you're trying things out because you're not sure how things work. And it's true, I have not actually tried uh, Google API as it stands and 10 minutes probably isn't enough, but at least we'll get a start So I got an API key. This will be our public API key. So let's Go ahead And put it in here. I mean normally you're not supposed to share these but We need to share one anyway because it's gonna be out there in Every single uh, application copy of this project will have to have this, otherwise it won't work. So we might as well share it. I don't care. I'll explain how to get one once we need it. Right now, we don't really need it. Code samples. Usually a good place to start. I didn't even consider, but this actually might not be the correct API. I was totally using the wrong one. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Samples of Java code side. We probably don't need any of this. YouTube. Oh, YouTube Builder. I see. So you're building a YouTube. What, what a... That, that makes sense. YouTube, YouTube. A new YouTube Builder. Uh, 
It still requires all the same resources though. We're using HTTP apparently. Okay, I'll say HTTP. Why does it not find it? This, this is outdated. It clearly doesn't work. Unless it's actually requiring some other library that's not included. Because if I put this here, yeah, it doesn't exist. It's part of samples. What are you, if, what's wrong with you? Why would you add something? Like, you actually need to go look at, ironically, GitHub repository probably to see some things here. Again, I've not used it, so that's why we're messing around here. So there we go, it's net HTTP transport. Uh, let's do it here. New net HTTP transport. We want some kind of a factory. Makes sense. And request initializer. Well, that one's not anywhere. Guess we could just look into the documentation. No for none. I'm not sure that that's gonna work, but let's try it. What else can we add to this? We can add application name, call it subbox. Just put an underscore, because that's what it is. And what else? I'm not seeing anything particular that I would want. Question is, where do you add the API key? That is the real question. Doesn't seem like anywhere. Well then. Now, well, that's because they are using OAuth, which is a little bit different. So you would ask for OAuth, but you I think you still need. I was, I could have sworn that you needed actually uh, to use. A key regardless. Could be wrong. It's been a long time since I used the API. This is obviously rubbish. We can't make use of this at all. In fact, we're probably going to be more or less uh, remaking this application right here, but with a lot less functionality. Look, search. Copy paste. No, no, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. This object is used to make data API requests. Required? No, it pretty clearly said to me here in this API, well, it would if it would stop inheriting its bloody documentation, but it says, there you go, in July, you're null for none. You lie! Also, you should use Java 8, unless this is an abstract class. Ah, look at this. You have to set it directly onto the search. Because we're going to create a search. Okay, well, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's do YouTube search. Uh, I guess list. That I assume defines something. No idea why would you call it list? I mean, because it's a collection of results, I suppose, but still. I'm just gonna wrap up here by trying to finish this quickly. By doing a little bit of copy-paste. I know that this will give me the ID and the snippet of a something. Let's add this exception to the signature. We don't care right now. So now we can add set key public API key. And my yes is then we can do also set. Ah, now we can set all kinds of different uh, search options. Save search. <laughs> no. What about the actual search? Yeah, let's, let's set max results to like 10. Well, 
13. Yes, because that's our actual. Because it's a long object, you have to add an L to it, of course. Who needs reasonable APIs? Yeah, we would want to add max results null, because that's like significant or something. <laughs> Whatever that means. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out without looking too much into their the example. That must be it, that's the query. Yeah. Their method names are literally just uh query parameters in the query. Like if you were to build this uh what this does is basically it says key equal this max results equal this q equals well we'll add let's code. And let me guess now execute using head no execute response and what can we do with response aha get items items all right that's not what we want to do actually let's just iterate over it oh i put it in the wrong place iterate over all the items for every item Well, we have ID and we have snippet. Honestly, can't we just print this out? Like, do a little bit of system out print line, you know? You know what I'm saying? Honestly, let's just print line the item and see what happens. How much could it take, right? And there you go, we got 10 search results with all kind of crap in it. Let's play, but with more code. It's Let's Code, the channel title, of course. And let me guess, none of this is my poor playlist. Well, it's hard to find the URL, like this is the URL for thumbnail. Well, anyway, I'm satisfied. We actually managed to get something done, and uh, we tried out the YouTube API. It's, it's very simple, very trivial, and uh, next episode we'll actually start working on the story uh, thank you guys for watching and i'll see you later